Welcome to the development sessions brought to you by Georgia Cities Foundation and Georgia Municipal Association. In the zone, the wonderful world of federal opportunity zones. Welcome. I'm Holly Hunt with the Georgia Department of Community Affairs, and we're here today to talk about federal opportunity zones and what communities need to know. So first, let's talk about what federal opportunity zones are. Federal opportunity zones are low income community census tracts designated for investments. 25% of the state's low income community census tracts were eligible for designation. Governor Deal approved 260 recommended census tracts that were then approved by Treasury in April of 2018. Designation as federal qualified opportunity zones last for 10 years. So I'm going to go ahead and answer some questions right now. We get a lot of questions on this particular, particular um, topic. There may be no additions, alterations of boundaries, or swaps, meaning swap this census tract for that census tract. I get a lot of questions on this. If you have a property um, on the other side of the road that's not in a federal opportunity zone um, and an opportunity zone is on the other side of the road, you cannot annex in that property. But the boundaries are set for 10 years. So what is the intent of federal opportunity zones? Well, they're created by the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017 to provide a new incentive to spur private investments in low income areas. Also to connect investors to overlooked but credit worthy opportunities. There's tax benefits to encourage investment in the form of temporary deferrals on capital gains, reduction in capital gains liability, uh, and tax exemption on gains of opportunity fund. And one of the best benefits is there's no cap on the benefits uh, that you can recognize with this program. That means unlimited potential for investors and communities alike. So let's talk about the investor incentives. Investors can reinvest unlimited amount of capital gains into an opportunity fund within 100 days of, the, of when they recognize the capital gain. So let's say that you're going to invest um, in an opportunity fund and you're in it for the duration. So let's say that you're going to leave it in for at least 10 years. So in year one, the capital gain is invested. In year five, you now have a 10% step up in basis, meaning you have a 10% reduction of the original gain that's subject to tax. Now in year seven, you can now have a 5% additional step up in basis, meaning you now have a 15% reduction of the original gain subject to tax. Also in year seven, at 1231.26, the tax on deferred gain is now due. That takes care of the first piece of the investor incentive, which is your cap deferred capital gains. Now there's a second piece, and that's gonna be the earnings that you've earned on the investment while it's in the opportunity fund. So you're, now you're gonna hold it until your investments in the opportunity fund until year 10. At that time, there is no tax on the post acquisition appreciation earned on the opportunity fund investment. So let's look at a deferral example. So in 2019, let's say that you invest a million dollars of capital gain in federal opportunity zones. In year seven, you're gonna recognize your original gain less than 15% and your taxes are now due. So you're only gonna pay, be paying taxes on your 850,000 instead of the one million, because you've got that 15% step up in basis points. So now in year 10, any gain on the Federal Opportunity Fund investment is not subject to capital gains. So those are some pretty good uh, in incentives for your investors in the program. So we talk about opportunity funds and investing in opportunity funds. Um, so let's, so, so what are they? Well, they're investment vehicles. They're organized as corporations or partnerships. They can have a very flexible structure. They can be large corporations or partnerships. They can be uh, uh, individuals. If you're an individual and you have um, a property in an opportunity zone, 
and you want to, and you have capital gains and you want to invest in uh, your own business or develop something on your own property, then you can become your own opportunity fund. It's a self-certification process on Form 8996. Um, Treasury is still uh, revising that form. Uh, they did some revisions in the second tranche of rules that just recently came out, and there's there will be a third. Um, and you must uh, the opportunity fund must invest 90% of their assets in federal qualified opportunity zone property. So what is opportunity zone property? Well, there's three types of eligible investments. Uh, they must invest in either the stock of a quality opportunity zone corporation, a partnership interest in a qualified opportunity zone partnership, or the business property used in qualified opportunity zone. So at this point, I would stop and say, if you are interested in becoming an opportunity fund, I would engage the assistance of a well-versed tax attorney and tax accountant um, in federal opportunity zones. Uh, the Georgia Department of Community Affairs is a basically a facilitator, an educator, and a repository of information. We do not opine on tax and legal issues. Um, it's a very complex program and one that is still going through uh, changes and, and the final rules have not yet been issued. So um, I wouldn't go it alone. I would engage uh, professionals to move forward in that respect. So now let's talk about what communities need to, need to do. So here I would like to say the three components that we look for or that we, we recommend is focus, collaborate, and plan. Those are easy words to say and easy to put on paper, but what do they mean? Focus is probably the, the most important on the page, and we'll come back to that in a minute. Collaborate. Most everybody knows what collaborate means. You're going, to, you're going to engage others in your community, those community leaders that, that can re represent everybody in the community um, to come together and talk about what the community needs are. And once you collaborate on, on that, then you can put your ideas into a written plan. Now, what we would caution is to focus less on the glossy print, okay, and focus more on the content, the thought, and the collaboration that's going to go into your vision, okay? And if you do that, then the plan and the glossy print will fall into place, okay? So concentrate more on your vision. So let's talk about focus. When you're, when you're thinking about your community needs, you're not just thinking about the community because when you, when you decide on what your vision is, you're gonna need your developer involved and you're gonna need your investor involved, right? You're not gonna be able to pull any of this off without your developers and your investors. So you gotta think about how everybody connects in the middle in order to make things happen. So let's talk about community need for a minute. What is the vision that your what is the vision for your community? What are the needs? It can be it can be anything. It can be um, any any of these bullet points listed here. It can be commercial, light industrial, manufacturing. Do you need multi-family development, single-family housing, mixed-use development, affordable and or workforce housing? Uh, do you need a new community center? Do you need charter schools? Do you need a grocery store to combat food deserts in your community? Um, 
that's a big problem in, in some of our metro Atlanta areas. Um, office buildings, parking structures to create more developable space if you're running out of uh, uh, space. Um, infrastructure, that could be roads, water, sewer, broadband, anything else infrastructure that you can think of that we haven't thought of. Um, it, it could be um, if, you, if you need a manufacturing plant, then with that, are you going to need workforce housing for that manufacturing plant? And if you bring in workforce housing, are you going to need a daycare for, those, for that workforce? Are you going to need additional grocery stores, perhaps, to accommodate that additional workforce? Are you going to need infrastructure? Are you going to need new water and sewer to accommodate the additional housing, right? So these are things that you need to think of as a community when you're talking about your vision, all right? But then you need to think of what of this is doable, right? What's realistic? And how do you engage your developers? What are the developers gonna be wanting? So let's talk about your developers. What are their concerns? Returns, right? What are they going to be looking for? Returns is, is going to be pretty high on their list. Readiness to proceed. When can they get started? If they start now, will they be finished in time for investment prior to 12-31-19? Because that's going to get them to their seven year and their 10 year marks to recognize the full benefit of the program. Are there any environmental concerns? What's the market opportunity? Are there any other concerns? And then they're going to need the investors, right? So how can they engage the investors? So let's think like an investor for a minute. What are the investors going to need? Okay, well, are they going to be impact or non-impact investors? Because you could, be, you could be talking about investors in California New York, you're not talking about just your local investors. We get calls at DCA from investors all over the United States looking for projects in Georgia. Those are usually your non-impact investors. What are they looking for? Returns, returns, returns. They're in it for the money, right? Or they could be impact investors. These are usually your local investors, your investors that live in Georgia or even live in your own communities. Yes, they're concerned about returns, but they're also concerned about community benefits, environmental benefits, perhaps cultural benefits, maybe other benefits we haven't thought of. And so what is the common theme that we see returns. There's got to be some returns in it. So if in your vision you've only come up with infrastructure, that's not going to yield returns for anybody. Not for the developers, not for the investors. So you're going to need something in the mix that's going to generate returns for these investors and developers. So you've got to find that balance there that's going to have a decent return that's going to give them the other things that they're looking for. So with that said, I want to point you to some resources that we have on the DCA website. Um, what I've done here is I've walked you through the steps on how to get to the Federal Opportunity Zone website. Um, you go to the website that you see, uh, click on uh, Community and Economic Development, uh, under incentive programs, you will then select Federal Opportunity Zones on the, on the basic info page, the first page, when you scroll down to the bottom. We've got several things there. You'll see an interactive map, which will, uh, when you select the interactive map, it will show you uh, uh, all the Federal Opportunity Zones in Georgia. You can zoom in to street level. You will see the street names. It will give you very detailed information. Uh, very good map to look at. If you, if you, the, the 
click on the submit a development opportunity. This is, this is a piece of software that we developed for the communities to use, okay? And this is where the communities can actually upload your projects that you have identified that, uh, for investors to see that you want investments for your community. This is something that the communities do. Uh, what you do is you, uh, when you click on that, it will bring up a screen. You will enter the project address in the top right corner. If it is in a property, uh, if it's in a federal opportunity zone, it will actually let you click on through. It will validate it as, as in a federal opportunity zone. So you can click on through and just answer the questions. Depending on the type of property, it will pop up different questions for you to answer. And answer as many of those questions as you possibly can because this is information for the investor and the developer to see, right? It's going to give, give them as much contact information, your contact information, who to call, a telephone number, uh, an email address, all the information about that property and project as you possibly can because this is, this is the connecting point that we have to connect the investors, developers, and the projects to the communities. All right, this is for you. Um, also on uh, this cover uh, page, you will see a box for presentations. On there, we have a community template that you can use to start building your prospectus, your community plan, if you will. Um, so it's an excellent resource. Uh, if you go to our resource tab, you will find the Atlanta Prospectus and the Make and Bid Prospectus for review. It is much the same as our in the same format as our community template. Um, don't, for, for the smaller communities, don't be scared off that these are larger um, cities. You can use it and just scale it down for your smaller communities. Same format, doesn't matter if you're a small community or a large community. Um, and then also on our resource tab, we have links to um, several other uh, websites, one being the EIG, Economic Innovation Group, who helped pin the legislation. They are an excellent resource for links to um, recent legislation, um, webinars on um, Federal Opportunity Zones, that's kind of a go-to that we use at DCA um, to gain knowledge on what's new and exciting in the world of Federal Opportunity Zones. It would be a great resource um, for anyone to use. And for more information, we are always available to help connect you to who you need to be connected to. Uh, this is my information here. And the best way to contact me through email is by use of the Federal Opportunity Zone email address. We have several people that monitor that. If for some reason that I am not available, there will be somebody else that can pick up the email and help you as well. Thank you so much.